Hello everyone. Welcome to Chandu.org. Waffle charts are one of a very powerful and interesting ways to show percentage out of a 100% value or something like that. I am not a huge fan of waffle charts, but I find that they add a little bit of novelty and fun as well as engagement to your visuals. So from time to time, I try to incorporate a waffle chart into one of my dashboards or reports. So today we are going to look at how you can create a waffle chart in Power BI. So here is a demo of the waffle chart. As you could see, it shows a waffle at the bottom of 20 and then some text, uh, sorry, card visual and, and then those things. The data for this came from the Makeover Monday challenge for the first week of September 2019. And what I have here is um, it's a survey result of uh, three age groups, 18 to 34, 35 to 54 and 55 and over and what is their favorite season, fall, spring, summer, and winter. And if I select one of these combinations, I will see their priorities like 55 and over, only 4% prefer winter, uh, whereas probably 37% prefer summer, uh, sorry, spring. And uh, 18 to 34, 20% prefer spring, whereas uh, maybe uh, more of them prefer summer. So that's the waffle chart. Uh, as you could see, there is no waffle chart visual within Power BI. So how would we create this? So that's the challenge. We could install a custom visual, but um, uh, I'm not a huge fan of those, uh, mainly because of the reliability and uh, changes that that could happen to them through the third party developers, etc. So for that reason, uh, we will use a different technique to make them. Uh, let's go and see that. Before we actually get into that, let me also demonstrate a waffle table. Uh, it sounds funny, but uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's not a dining table full of waffles. It's, it's actually something like this, where uh, you can have two dimensions like ages and seasons, and then the values at the intersection are shown like this. This is a very cool visualization, although it does have some extra baggage like the column numbers and row numbers on the top and side and uh, some extra elements. But uh, with a little bit of careful formatting, it's easy to get rid of them and then show only this bit. So that's that. Uh, let's go and see this. Uh, let's examine the data first. Uh, imagine you got some sort of a uh, result here like this, you know, by age and season, what is the preferred value? And this is a percentage. Uh, so we have a point two is 20% and 37 is 37% like that. And then what we will do is we will introduce a a disconnected table, the table that has no relationship to the model. Uh, like uh, this is called numbers table here, but you can call it whatever you want. I'll show you how this numbers table is. Um, it would have 100 numbers uh, and then the row and column for that. So the numbers will go from one through 100 in the index column. And then a row will be one for the first 10, two for the next 10, three for the next 10 like that. And then column is just one to 10 going like this. Now, how would you make such a table? It's up to you. You can just create it uh, in, in a spreadsheet and then just bring it over uh, manually. Alternatively, if you are lazy, which you should be when you're using the software, uh, you can also create this in Power Query. So I'm going to quickly show you how I made this in Power Query. I will edit this query here. It's kind of a roundabout, but what I did is I started off with the list, which is equal to curly brackets one dot dot 10. So I'll get a list of 10 numbers. Then I converted that into a table using that button there. So we get a table of one to 10 number. And then I renamed this as row. And then I added a custom column. Uh, within the custom column, the logic is each, um, each value would be another list of one to 10, right? Uh, so that will give me a list. And then when you expand that, you would get this one 1, 10 times, 2, 10 times, and then each then will have 1 to 10 running numbers. Then I added an index column using index column from 1. So that will give me 1 to 100 numbers. And then I changed the data type of everything to whole number. That's it. That's my number stem. So once this table is ready, we push this into Power BI. Uh, we bring this and then you now have two tables, your original table and the numbers table. The numbers table shall have no relationship to the original table. Uh, because it's a disconnected table that we are purely bringing in to achieve the task of um, showing the waffle. <laughs> uh, 
right uh, and then what we will do is we will go and uh, create some measures for example the very first measure is a number measure um, and this measure will be it's just sum of index obviously it would be sum of all the hundred numbers without using a context but if i put it in a table with both row and column uh, then all of the each of the hundred numbers will be it will be just the index number so i can show this to you in a table here uh, where uh, we can see that it's not necessary to create this measure but having a measure will help you when you are building the whole thing um, like this so we have a table if I just put number, it would be the sum of all the numbers, 50, 50 or something like that. But if I put uh, both uh, row and column, then all the combinations uh, will, will come up. I think if I say don't summarize for both of these, then for at individual combination, it's just the number, right? That's what it is. Okay. So that's my number. And then once the number is there in the preferences uh, table that's the that's your original table uh, we will add another measure which is preferred value and this is just average of preference value times 100 now keep in mind that here we are averaging the averages so this is not the correct way to go about it you really want a weighted average here uh, for certain types of data but uh, let's just roll with it and we will average the preferences because we don't know how many people participated in each age group and uh, and that's there, so there's no way to calculate the weighted average right so we will see that it will be another measure that will give me the average preference and then times 100 this is because we have that as a percentage there whereas here we are comparing it from 1 to 100 so we got the preferred value we got the uh, we got the number and then we will add a, a third measure called waffle field which will be if preferred value is less than number then we want blank else one uh, so that means uh, if the number is let's say preferred value is 22 uh, then preferred value from 1 to 22 will be 1 and then all other values will be black so I can show this to you here uh, in this table we can just add waffle field and what that does is it will take up to I think 22 at the overall average level um, and then so it will have ones and then some blanks so at this stage if i uh, if i now put row and column into an xy chart and then get the waffle field as a size then i have one one sized bubbles for up to 22 and then blank sized bubbles from that point onward so that's what we did uh, i did i made an xy chart i took row and put it into uh, it doesn't really matter but uh, you could try here uh, in x and then column into y we will see how this waffle looks otherwise we may have to flip and then we will have to don't summarize these things to get all the dots so we will have 100 dots this is kind of a dot grid that we get and then for the size we will put waffle filled and uh, yeah i think this waffle is going sideways so we will have to flip this over Yeah. so we will get uh, something like this now depending on what what your data is either of these axes may stretch up to 0 to 10 but the other may stop at 3 because we only have 22 so this is when we, we have to go and start formatting we go to uh, each axis uh, this is also the way XY charts are drawn is it goes from 0 to 10 but the dot is drawn at exactly 10 so only half of the circle can be seen the other half is here so to, to kind of solve that problem we start from uh, 0 uh, but uh, we go up to 10.5 I think we need to start from 0 0.5 uh, oh, probably 0 that will do it okay so that's that uh, and then we will have to do the same for y-axis as well I will quickly do the setting uh, which is start from zero and at uh, 10.5 so that it will, it will show me the entire grid and then comes the next part which is the fun bit uh, we will need to uh, set up the shape the shape would be by default circle but you can change this to a square that's that's what we are using we will use and then if I reduce the size the size would be some sort of a ridiculous number like zero I don't know what this means 
probably it's a scaling factor but i found that depending on the size of the chart that you create if you put it to probably negative 15 or something you will start to see a waffle so for me i think negative 20 did the trick so i could get uh, something like this so this is my waffle and as you could see now uh, the waffle is there uh, there's a little bit of extra white space if you adjust your axis then that will do uh, I think for the original chart, I went with uh, 0 0.5 rather than 0 uh, so that it's kind of uh, hugging the axis there. Uh, and we could do the same for Y axis as well. We can just say uh, start at 0 0.5 and then so this is how the waffle is coming up. Once the waffle is there, it's a simple matter of adding extra slicers to you can start to play with this, right? You can say 55 and over winter or uh, spring and then it will show that what about showing a label i mean waffle itself is good but if you want to go a little fancy you could add a label of course at that point waffle itself becomes a decoration because nobody looks at this uh, but i think it creates some sort of a cool visualization that's what we are going for uh, so we select this uh, we we sorry we insert a card visual and then put the preferred value there that's that's the value because only one is there so that's what it comes up there and then you just lay it out on the top uh, and uh, using the new power bi feature which is you can group visuals you could kind of group these that card and the chart together and then put it there what about the title you know you could see the dynamic chart titles uh, using conditional formatting trick uh, that i published recently that will explain to you how to get that title also change so here that's how i did it uh, i got this i applied some formatting in the title i made dynamic so as i select something else i will see percentage of 18 to 34 year olds liking spring mm, i probably need to work on that grammar there um and then that's that's what it is what about waffle table then that looks pretty cool right um this is where uh, the next trick comes in what i did here is uh, i made a matrix and then put a row into rows column into columns so we get uh, each in row column and then i put waffle filled into the values so we will see ones and like like that um and uh, and then uh, th this in itself is not useful um so because uh, when i put waffle field because the waffle field has blank you know power bi will automatically omit those other things i think uh, if i go to row and then show items with no data that would uh, kind of solve that problem but both at row and column level and uh, usually on a chart zero is here and then one goes up like that in y-axis but in tables if it goes like this so you could sort this in reverse uh, and then the, the waffle goes down but it's only showing once how do i get it in the color uh, well simple you go to waffle field apply conditional formatting background color and uh, and start applying a background color based on on the waffle field value itself so waffle field minimum would be uh, let's just say um, i think we can set only the ma maximum value minimum there is um, um, red color so i'll probably switch it to white and, uh, and then what that does is it will give me that how come there is one showing up you know, you, how do i get rid of that one there and just show it like a filled thing this is um, not so easy as it appears uh, so if i go to conditional formatting um, background color um, there is no option to say just show the background color right for certain other conditional formats for example if i go to conditional formatting data bars uh, i have show bar only option so i can only show the bar i don't need to show the number but for uh, this there is no such thing so that's why i did what i did is i created a dummy measure the dummy measure is simply blank and instead of waffle filled field i put dummy measure there what this dummy measure is doing is it's showing an empty space everywhere and then we can conditional format this dummy measure on background color but rather than basing it on itself, we will base it on on the waffle field field. And then we will say lowest color is white and the highest is this. Um, or, uh, you know, maybe don't format default formatting. I think that will also do. And this will, 
this would create that kind of a waffle so this is a single waffle how do you get it like a waffle table with two dimensions it's simple all you have to do is you can add a season on the rows and the age group on the columns so we got two levels and then we can um, we will make it nice and big like this and then we will drill rows to the lowest level both and then switch to columns and then drill on columns as well and um, and you will get this kind of a waffle table um, it's looking nice but i'm not very uh, happy with the way these are going down so what i could do is i could switch this over i can move the age age group on the top and season down uh, so that uh, so this all depends on how much screen real estate we have and uh, and then you should probably get something where i can see everything in one shot but it can be a good addition to a, a business dashboard or a starting page where you want to set the conversation tone and then uh, offer uh, additional pages where extra insights are provided i hope you found this useful this is a very fun chart that i had uh, uh, I've had fun creating it and I hope you will uh, also enjoy it. Feel free to download the workbook from the description and let me know if you have any suggestions or feedback. Thanks. Bye-bye.